Hey all, Space Colonizer here. This is a follow-up video to my run-ahead detection explainer. This video assumes you've watched that already so we can get right into it. Link in the description below if someone got to this video first somehow. So we demonstrated before how to detect the use of run-ahead, but that assumed the video was captured at 60 frames per second, which is recommended generally since the NES runs at about that frame rate. But sometimes people capture their runs in 30 frames per second, this is done because it's a lot less taxing on your computer and also helps if you have limited internet bandwidth. Since our method of detecting run ahead requires us to count frames, having some frames missing will complicate things, but it's still possible and here's how. So before we were only concerned with how many frames there were from the first frame of the input to the first frame of the animation. But now since we're going to be missing some frames, we might not see those particular frames. So we have to look a little closer at the animation and look for some unique looking frames. And we'll also need a frame counter in addition to the input display, which is already a highly recommended thing for emulator users to have on anyways. I'll start off by looking at a game I play, Godzilla Monster of Monsters. We're going to get our baseline animation delays and we're doing this at 60 frames per second so that we see what it's supposed to look like normally. There's no need to measure a separate 30 frame per second baseline. The animation we'll be looking at is when we select one of the player monsters on the overworld. I've chosen this animation because it has a unique first frame which we'll see in a moment. So right here we see that we're confirming that uh, it's zero frames of run ahead. And then we just need to find the first frame of the input right here. And then one, two. And you'll see here the first frame of the animation. Godzilla's kind of a little fuzzy. And then one frame later, he's not fuzzy anymore. So that's the unique first frame I was talking about. All right, so we've determined our baseline delay for this animation. It's zero frames of run ahead. It's two frames until the fuzzy frame. And then one frame after that, they go solid. And then, you know, for every level of run ahead, everything happens one frame earlier. So now let's go ahead and use this while trying to verify a 30 frame per second video. Okay, here's a run of Godzilla I did a while back on Messin, which I captured at 30 frames per second. Things might get a little confusing as I try to explain this. There's two kinds of frames we'll be talking about, the video frames and the game frames. The video frames are what we'll be seeing as we advance the video frame by frame. But we'll also have the frame counter in the upper right corner to keep track of the game frames. Hopefully it'll be clear by context which type of frame I'm talking about in any given moment. I'm using a spreadsheet to help keep track of stuff. The columns are the different levels of run ahead. And the lines represent how many frames from input to animation. X represents the first frame of the input. F is the fuzzy frame. And S is the first frame where the monster appears solid. Okay, so we find the first frame of the input, and then we actually backtrack one, uh, one frame. So you can see here that's frame 1120. We'll make it that a note of that over here. And then the first frame of the input is frame 1122. We'll leave a gap for that missing frame. And then the next video frame is 1124. And that was the frame that was fuzzy. So we'll call that 1124F. We'll call the 1122, 1122X, so that we know that that's where the, uh, the input was. So now we'll go ahead and compare it with our baseline delays. Let's start by assuming that the first frame of the input was on this missing frame that we didn't see, because it's possible that that's where it could have been. But we can see here that does not line up with what we saw. If the first frame of the input had been 1121, then we would have seen a solid Mothra on this frame. We would have seen a fuzzy Mothra on this frame if it were one, and a solid frame, Mothra on this frame if it had been two. So clearly 1121 was not the first frame of the input. So then now we know that 1122 was the true first frame of the input. And you can see here that that perfectly lines up with zero frames of run ahead. 1124 was the fuzzy Mothra. If it had been one frame of run ahead, then 1124 would have been solid. And if it had been two, then 1122 would have also been fuzzy. So that basically confirms that zero frames of run ahead were used here. 
but uh, the reason we were able to test this this way is because we had that unique fuzzy frame. That helped out a lot in helping us confirm that this was zero run ahead. Not every animation is going to have that one unique frame. So let's go ahead and look at a different game where the animation might be a little different. So here we are in Ninja Gaiden. We'll be looking at the jumps. Got to get our baseline delays first, starting with zero frames of run ahead. Okay, here's the first frame of the input. One. Okay, so here's an example of a game where there's just one frame of delay from the input to the animation, so that's interesting. So first frame ahead, and we get the first jump animation. One frame further, he's higher up. Another frame, he's higher up. Okay, then on the next frame, he starts to spin, and then higher up, higher up, spin, higher up, higher up, spin, higher up, higher up, spin, and that should be enough. Let's go ahead and check with one frame of run ahead. Find that first frame. Okay, there it was. All right, first frame. Okay, so the first frame of the input is now the first frame of the jump. That's because we only had a one frame delay uh, with zero run ahead and now one higher and spin that's a little early so let's double check that first frame of the input higher spin there should have been another there should have been another thing in there oh I see what happened I see what happened. Okay, so this is the frame before the input. You can see here that it's 2249 is the uh, game frame. And then one frame later, it's 2251. This is captured in 60 frames per second, by the way. So that missing frame there is because the NES doesn't run at exactly 60 frames per second. It's like about 60.1. Um, so every once in a while, even a 60 frame per second capture is going to be missing a frame. About one frame every 10 seconds, I think, is where the math is going to work out on that. So that's something we need to be aware of. Kind of a rare situation that this happens. But that's why this actually looked like it was happening. This was looking like two frames a run ahead all of a sudden, even though it was only one frame a run ahead. Uh, and that's just because we had a missing frame. So we'll go ahead and just make a note of that. There was a missing frame here that was the true first frame of the input that we didn't see. And then that would bring it to what we would have expected. But then everything else is the same, like up, up, spin, up, up, spin, that kind of stuff. So it looks like that's all normal. Now we're setting it to two frames of run ahead. Finding that first frame of the input. There it was. First frame of the input, he's already in the air. One, spin. So that's what we would expect from two frames of run ahead. I don't think there was any missing frames here. Up, up, spin. Up, up, spin, up, up, spin. So yeah, that's all normal there. All right, so I think I've, we've collected enough data here. I think measuring the exact pixels for the changes in height during the jump is going to be too much trouble. I don't think we need to do that. We're just going to focus on the frames where the spins begin, where the, where the direction changes occur. The fact that each direction change only lasts three frames, an odd number, I think that's going to really help us out. We'll go ahead and just work with that, and let's go ahead and uh, compare this to a run. All right, so I recorded myself going through the first level. I want to emphasize that I don't run this game, and I never even played it casually, but that shouldn't matter for what we're doing here. Unlike the other examples, this one is not set to zero run ahead. We'll actually be measuring a cheated run here, but I won't say how much the run ahead is set to. That way you can follow along with the evidence and see where it leads. Here on my spreadsheet, I have various run aheads and when the different direction changes happen. X, as before, is the first frame with the input. U represents the first frame where we see him jumping and his head is pointed up. Right is the first frame when he spins and his head is pointed to the right. D is for when he spins again and his head is pointed down. L is for when he spins again and his head is pointed to the left. And U is for when he spins again and his head is pointed upright again. And that should be enough. So let's go ahead and find ourselves a jump and get it measured. Oh, and I started with one right off the bat there. 
Okay, so we want to measure the frame before. Frame before is a 591, and nothing going on on that frame. Then we've got 593, and that is the X U frame. 595, nothing changed. 597 is when he's pointed to the right. 599. So when he's pointed down, 601, nothing changes. 603 is when he's pointed left. And 605 is when he's pointed up again. Okay, and then now we'll compare these to our baseline delays and see what it looks like it could be. First we check if this was possibly the first frame here. Okay, so if this were the first frame of the input, uh, the missing frame 592 that would be consistent with zero run ahead it looks like it would not be consistent with one frame or two frames of run ahead but if the first frame of the input was here that would not be consistent with zero frames but would be consistent with one frame so inconclusive whether or not this is zero frames or one frame so let's go ahead and see if we can find a jump that is definitive. All right, so here we are at another jump. The frame before the input is 1,000. And then 1,002 is the XU frame. 1,004 is when he's pointed to the right. 1,006, nothing changes. 1,008 is when he's pointed down. And then it looks like we did not go to 1,010 like you would expect. We got 1,009. That happens sometimes. And then we jump to 1,012. 10, 11. 1,012 would be here. And now that's when he's pointed to the left. And then 1,014, he's pointed up again. Okay. So then now let's go ahead and test our baselines against this. Let's first assume what would what, it, what would it be like if this was the first frame of the input. Okay, so this is not consistent with zero frames of run ahead because uh, he turned right a little early, but it could be consistent with one frame of run ahead. We've already ruled out two. Let's see what happens if we're down here. Once again, it cannot be zero frames of run ahead because he turned a little too early. It could also not be one frame of run ahead on this frame. So we actually now know that this is not the first frame of the input. It must have been 1001, the missing frame. In which case, we have now confirmed that this run uses one frame of run ahead, which is exactly what I had set it to. So you got to survey a few jumps until you get enough evidence to narrow it down to only one possibility. So that's it. That's how you measure run ahead on 30 frame per second video submissions. Uh, this method might not work for a lot of games. For example, in Tetris, once a piece has spun, it's spun, and there's no unique animation frames to analyze. Uh, there's probably ways to figure it out for those games, but I can't analyze them all. In the end, 60 frames per second captures should be highly recommended for any game anyways, especially if we're talking about, you know, world record competitive or top time competitive runs. So hopefully you won't have to resort to these more complicated tests anyways. But anywho, that's it. Thanks for watching and have a good one.